about dealing with everything that's happening right now. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, for yeah. our audience, do you mind just like introducing yourself, your name, where you're from, your pronouns, if that's cool? Yeah, uh, my name is Lars Um but I go by Larry, so you can call me that. It's easier in English. Um, <laughs> I live in Montreal, Canada. I'm a photographer, sometimes director. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and yeah. Cool. Are you um, from Montreal as well, or is that just where you live now? Yeah, I'm from Montreal, lived here my whole life. Wow. How is everything with the quarantine and stuff going on there? Is it any different? I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit different in Canada. I think it's been contained a bit more. Mm. Like, from what I'm reading in the States, it's quite intense right now. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like the measures by the government are getting stricter and stricter every day which is something mm -hmm. that's really stressing me out. Like they're starting to be like police handing out fines and like going into people's homes and like that kind of stuff. Really? Yeah. So that's people's homes for what? Because uh, gatherings are illegal now. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow. Has anyone like personally that, you know, been affected by it? If you don't mind sharing. Um, not that I know personally, but like friends of friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so just some part, uh, so I just wanted to know a little bit more about your personal life. You say you describe yourself as a photographer and sometimes director. Is there like, do you also, do you enjoy directing as much as you like photography or is it like mostly photography? Like that's your passion. Um, I would say mostly photography. I think, um, I really love still imagery and like creating a scene and directing is like, there's so many other aspects that come into play. Um, mm -hmm. But I would I would love to do more directing. It's just kind of I'm a, a lot less of a technical person, so I'm a lot less into like the really techie aspect of video making. Mm -hmm. So if I ever get to a point where I can afford to like have a really good camera person and a really good sound person, like I would love to direct. But yeah, <laughs> so like photography is definitely more of like a solo thing that you feel like you can do all of that on your own. Yeah, like photography, it's like it's just me and the camera and like available light and it's like feels a lot more intimate of a process mm. but I'm sure there's ways to make directing like feel intimate as well but I don't know yeah photography is amazing. <laughs> cool. <laughs> do, would you um when people ask you like what you are is it photographer or do you kind of define yourself outside of what you do um I consider myself a photographer I guess like an artist on a wider mm -hmm. scheme but the work that I do is very autobiographical. It's a lot of self-portraiture um, and imagery of my community, my loved ones, my immediate surroundings. So it's very much like documenting my life. So there's not a really strong boundary between my work and my personal life. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely noticed in a lot of your imagery, it's really beautiful. Would you say that you are your own inspiration for a lot of your art or what else inspires you to create? Um. Yeah, I would say that most of my work is inspired by my own lived experiences and wanting to share that story and coming from a place of like what what is mine to tell is always something that I ask myself. Um, so yeah, I feel like most of my inspiration is just like little moments every day where I'm like, oh, this feels photogenic and let me capture mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. Your most recent series, is it puberty, right? Or have you worked on something more recently? Than I mean, I'm working on like a lot of different projects all at once, but puberty is like the main, the mm -hmm. main thing. Yeah. I know you talked about puberty a lot in other interviews that I've read and I've really enjoyed what I've read. Um, but did, is there anything else that you think um, now that the virus is such a big thing, is there anything else that inspires you to keep creating um, your puberty series? Well, I think it's interesting. So to introduce it to anyone watching this, Puberty is an ongoing self-portrait project that I've been doing since um, January 2019. And I started it because I was going through burnout and I wanted to kind of force myself to photograph something every day. And it quickly turned into self-portraits because I was spending a lot of time at home alone and kind of relearning to take care of myself. Um, and then at the same time, I had recently started HRT, taking testosterone as a trans person. And so it felt like a good kind of 
um, opportunity to document my transition and to do so on a, a very kind of slow um, trajectory. So I've been doing those daily self-portraits since then. So it's been like a year and a few months. Mm -hmm. And it's been interesting with the current like self-isolation and all of that with the virus outbreak that a lot of the themes in the project are becoming kind of more relevant now than ever because it's all about being at home and being by yourself and, and taking care of yourself and the mysticity and all of these things that like we're all forced to um, focus on at the moment. So I've been continuing to shoot it, obviously, during this time. Honestly, it's been harder for me because I'm usually spending a lot of time alone but right now everyone who lives here and also my best friend is staying with us so it's kind of the opposite like I have, we have no alone time right now um and it's been nice to not be alone through this but also the process of making the project is a more solitary one so it's been a bit challenging to find those moments to photograph um mm -hmm. and also just like trying to be easy on myself and not force myself to be like ultra productive during this pandemic um so I'm just kind of taking it as it goes, but still making photos when I can. Yeah. That was interesting what you said. I've seen like a lot of people being like, use this time to create, use this time to do this, 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 yeah. this. And like, it's like really, I think off-putting for a lot of people. What do you think about like that constant push to be productive? Um, yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of feelings about it <laughs> because it's so, it's so ingrained in us, the productivity culture and like even more so in the States, like this, urge to constantly be putting stuff out and producing um and using your time productively and so and then there's also this thing where it's like we need to make money to survive <laughs> um so i don't know it's 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 a weird balance and then also just thinking about it and taking a step back and being like actually this is a really good opportunity for all of us to not buy into that and and slow down and so mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just constantly battling with myself every day of like I want to be I want to get all the things on my to-do list done like this great opportunity but also like I'm feeling so overwhelmed and I just need to like take care of my home and shower and like mm -hmm. dishes, you know right, exactly yeah um so in these times like when you do want to be creative what kind of put you in that place because it's not like you can just go somewhere else and go to your creative place so what inspires you to be creative when you want to be um during this time um honestly and like this is the thing with this project purity as a whole too it's like 99 percent of the days i have to force myself to do it like mm -hmm. i don't want to do it like it's not it it's I guess also because the process of taking self-portraits is like an annoying one because I've, I've set up the camera and i have to look at it and then frame it and go back at it and like it's just this back and forth that is like slightly cumbersome and so most days I really just have to be like okay doing it it's happening and then <laughs> you know like I, I did it and it doesn't matter if it's a masterpiece or not it's just to say that I I did it and then and then I'll look back on all the photos like a month later and be like oh that was you know that was an interesting one and, um so yeah just honest being honest i just have to force myself to do it <laughs> yeah. and i like not expecting every single piece or like forcing yourself to make every piece a masterpiece i feel like that's where a lot of the good stuff happens that's that's what that was my whole aim with the project like mm -hmm. and when i first started i was just like yeah this is a picture of me like on my toilet and like <laughs> jeremy you know eating breakfast and i didn't think there would be any interest in it but but then people were super responsive to it, I think, because it was so relatable. Right. Um, so, yeah, maybe something that you don't think is a masterpiece, other people will think it is. So. <laughs> One man's trash, another man's treasure. <laughs> yeah. You had a, um, a art show, um, right, that was coming out in New York, a New Visions yeah. with Vice and Photographiska. Yeah. Could you talk more about that? Uh, yeah, so they did this exhibition that was, like, basically who they feel are, like, new, interesting voices in photography. Um, and my work was featured in the exhibition. It was three self-portraits I shot in Iceland last year. Mm. Um, it opened, like, kind of the week that all of this COVID-19 stuff was starting to play out um, 
in North America. So they were, at first they were like, we're going to postpone the, the opening party. Um, but it's still open. Like you can come and see it. And then literally the day after all museums were ordered to shut down or whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so people got to see it for like 24 hours and now, um, I don't know what's going to happen with it, but mm. it, it's still yeah. a cool opportunity. Is it um, at least virtual? Is there any way to see um, your art that way? Not right now. I think they're working on something. Like I filmed a little feature and stuff, and I f I'm sure they're gonna try mm -hmm. to do something out of it. But I think <laughs> at this point, it's just kind of scrambling and, and trying right. to figure out <laughs> right what you know, they're doing. Yeah. Has um has the pandemic affected? Because that's one way that it's affected your work. Has it affected your work um, in other ways as well? as an artist um it's interesting because that, that's like uh, as a commercial artist it has in fact mm -hmm. impacted me a lot because like i can't do photo shoots of it. like there's some photographers who are doing it remotely where like they'll they're directing through a webcam or whatever but like mm -hmm. i mean the type of work that i do is very intimate and it's very like one-on-one -on -one and, and taking your time and seeing what comes and just being in a room with someone is not something I'm legally allowed to do right now. So, uh, other than the people I live with. So yeah, obviously that part of it has been impacted. Um, all my exhibitions are kind of on hold. Um, mm. Print sales, like I'm still selling some prints, but not really mailing them right now. Like it's just, everything's slowed down. But then my personal practice, which is taking daily self portraits in my home, like has not changed you know and my personal life like i'm a homebody i stay home i don't really i love being home so i would say what's changed is just that i'm forced to focus on that side of my work a lot more right now um mm -hmm. but yeah how are you spending your time when you're not like working and being creative um honestly a lot of my free time is spent like taking care of my home right now because there's four of us and it just like gets messy really really fast like the dishes pile up i don't even understand <laughs> <laughs> four people eating all of our meals at home is wild right now <laughs> um and uh yeah i have a lot of sympathy for parents but yeah so i don't know just doing that um trying mm -hmm. to build routines has been a big thing in my life not just through this but like the last few years mm -hmm. really learning to like develop a morning routine and a night routine and making sure that I stretch every day and and then every night we've been watching a movie as well which is nice but what is some of your favorite which I also have been what I was saying what kind of what are your favorites that you guys have watched so far um we've been watching a lot of horror movies um and we've also been watching s some musical comedies a lot um but I've been really into Rewatching the 90s PBS kids show Wishbone. Oh, I don't think I recall. It's like, it's like, oh, sorry, I just got an email. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's about, it's like a dog and, and he reads like books. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Is, um, yeah, I would recommend it. It's very soothing. You can just look up the Wishbone full episodes on YouTube. <laughs> yeah cool love that uh what are your we're living in like as you know and as everyone knows it's such a scary and like like pessimistic time that we're living in what are some of the positives that you're seeing right now in the world? um <laughs> right i'm like okay. right. <laughs> um i think that it's it's I think it's it is um really nice to slow down because I've mm -hmm. been feeling like before this happened that and even as this is happening I feel like our lives are just not a human pace anymore and like we're expected to do so much and and all of this is really um making us feel disconnected from ourselves and each other so I think it's nice to have time to slow down and, and rethink about priorities and all of that um i think that's kind of hindered right now by the fact that we don't have a lot of support 
on how to survive in a capitalist world without any means to make money. Um, but <laughs> aside from that, um, yeah, I think it's just nice to take time to center ourselves. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I feel like this is shifting a lot of people's conceptions about, um, I don't know how to say it, but just about the fact that like we're all connected and we need to support each other and that the mm -hmm. system that we've been living in don't do that basically right and yeah. also I, I i hope that this is a step towards prison abolition because now we all get to see what it's like to be cooped up and it's not nice <laughs> wow that's hmm, i guess i didn't even think about it that way but it's so true like other people in solitary confinement and yeah. not even just that but prison itself um yeah, so I guess I, like I'm hopeful that this will bring about positive social change. Right now we're in the middle of it, so it doesn't feel mm -hmm. so nice, but we'll see. <laughs> you talked a little bit about how we're all kind of using this time to get more in touch with ourselves, which I agree. Do you mind talking more about identity and on top of that, what trans and non-binary identity and representation means to you? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What does it mean to me? Um, I think, I mean, there's like the obvious answer of like, when I was growing up, I didn't see any representation. And so I didn't know that this was like a valid way of being. And so um, it is important in that way to help people be more comfortable with themselves. Uh, personally, I love a lot of the work that I do is not so much about just representation of like, here's a trans person, this, here's what we look like or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like the work that I'm doing with puberty is aimed a lot at just humanizing our existences and being like, look, maybe um, our identity feels foreign to you, but like we still brush our teeth and like <laughs> have breakfast like you do, you know, and like just these very basic um, human things that we all go through. So that's that's more the lens that I'm looking at representation through these days. Yeah. Mm. And have you, have you felt like, um, in you specifically, do you think your identity um, or your views of your own identity have changed since quarantine? And do you think that they will change, like, by the end of all this? Uh, sorry, my views on identity? Mm hmm And your own identity. My own identity. I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Everything is hard to say right, right now. Right now, I'm just day by day. Uh, I feel pretty much the same um mm -hmm. <laughs> I, one thing that is nice is i feel like as an non-binary person who's more visibly um gender non-conforming like every moment of leaving the house is stressful because it's like you don't know how people are going to respond to you mm -hmm. uh especially where i live it's it's very gendered like anytime someone addresses you like when you're paying for groceries or anything they'll say like madame or monsieur like there's no in between um a little bit less here like in france it's even more but just french language in general is very gendered um and so just being home with my loved ones is nice because i don't have to worry about that because mm -hmm. like everyone who lives here is trans so, <laughs> so that part of it is nice um kind of a, a break from being really really aware of my identity all the time Mm hmm. I so in terms of you speaking about French, um, how what is the language like in French? Because I know there's words in English, and we're like building more words to help us understand um, non-binary and trans in those experiences. Is it the same in French? Like, are there words to describe that? There are words, um, and there's so basically the French language language is just very gendered. Like every single word is gendered. Right. So not just like it's not just about pronouns, it's like the the table has a gender and the window has a gender and the ceiling has a gender. <laughs> and so it's, and then every single adjective has a gender as well. So unless you're like using masculine as neutral, like you're consciously making a decision of, of gendering yourself in one way or another every time you address yourself or speak about anyone. And so there's ways in like written language to combat that um, by doing like slashes and stuff and mm. being inclusive, but in the spoken language, it's it's quite hard. And there are people developing more gender neutral 
you know, variations and stuff, but it's not like widespread or anything at this point. So mm, wow. that's, that's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I just like, I knew that French and like Spanish gender words, but I'd never even thought of it in that way. And that's so, yeah. that sounds tough to have to deal with all the time. It is. And like, I don't speak a lot of French for that reason, honestly. <laughs> it's just such a puzzle every time and, and it's like having to think about all my words and and spin sentences in a way that aren't gendered too gendered is, is really difficult. So Yeah. Yeah. Is there any advice that you would give to freelance artists in this time right now? Um let me think about it. I think the advice that I'm trying to give to myself is to trust that, um, just trust that I have enough and trust that there is enough to go around and also trust that, um, whatever opportunities you thought you were going to get during this time, but aren't, aren't lost forever and mm. that. I don't know. I think my main advice right now also is just to not force yourself to be productive because we don't know what's going on. We don't know how long this is happening. This is traumatic for everyone. Like, and if it's inspiring you to make art, that's great. And if it's inspiring you to sleep, that's fine. Like, that's how I feel. Right now. Thank you. I need that advice. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so to hear that. <laughs> um, well, to leave this on like a more positive note, what do you think is the first thing you'll do when you when we get out of all this? Oh my god. I don't know because I love being home. Like that's not <laughs> um I I feel like the first thing I'll do is definitely see some friends that I haven't seen in a while. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a really fun time for reconnection for everyone. I'm excited yeah. for that. And just be in a different space. Like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that'll be nice. Go to a park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this talk. Um, thanks for spending your time with me. No problem. And wishing you good luck through all this. Thank you. You as well. And hopefully we can speak soon. Yeah. Alrighty. Bye. Thanks so Bye. much.